Honestly, this might be one of the best budget gaming panels, but again, budget. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Marisa, the four piece warranty of Wookiee Triple XL. And we have the S2722 DGM. It's a 1440p VA, 165 hertz, 1500 R 27 inch monitor with a periscope neck. Uh, it's basically almost exactly the same as the previous gen, just with a couple nice little updates. And one thing that they kind of stepped back on, which was also a bit interesting. But before we get ahead of ourselves, Let's go through what's in the box. It actually comes with a nice package. It comes with an HDMI and then the DisplayPort cable as well. And then a nice kettle plug with the actual three pin in it for South Africa, which is really, really nice because most just throw in that horrible two pin that you use for like gardening equipment and it's just kind of rubbish. So that's nice. Thank you, Dal. You've done well there. The panel and the screen itself. Let's talk about the screen firstly. It's got a periscope neck, as I noted before, but this one is slightly shorter than the previous generation. So that was kind of interesting to me, but it goes all the way down to the floor, like literally, if I just push it, there we go, literally into the floor and then pretty high up and then it's got really good tilt. So even if you are a seven foot person uh, and uh, on the, um, you know, Amazonian tribe sort of level, like Emma Dilemma, hashtag just saying, then this will be perfect for you because you can still have a tilt up to you even when you are like seven foot and change. In the back middle, you'll also notice a 100 by 100 vase amount. That's because you can put this on a desk clamp. So if you don't want to use the periscope neck and this very tiny base, which is a big plus for me, honestly, uh, especially for those of us trying to get closer to the monitor, it doesn't take up a lot of desk space. So it is easy to sit closer to it because of that. I, I sort of like that. But if that's not good enough for you and you want to attach a mount to it, then you can, you can get yourself a monitor on. The port setup is just as comprehensive as it was before. You've got a kettle plug on the far left, two HDMIs, and then a display port. And next to the display port, you might notice a 3.5 mil jack. That's in case you want to split audio for things like consoles, where you can just send all the audio down the HDMI, and then you can have the other audio coming out of the 3.5. So you can send it to a speaker system or something to that effect, which is just kind of a nice to have. And especially at the price point, it's a nice check mark as far as the feature set goes. But the physical setup of the monitor hasn't really changed generation and generation. And there's no real reason to. The only thing that they have changed is they've taken the light beam out of the back. I think this is more for the budget panels and stuff. And they've put it in the bottom. So there is a chin light beam at the bottom, which kind of acts like your power button because the power button is so small once again, on the bottom left hand side of yeah, you know, or right hand side of your screen the left right anyway it's on the bottom over there and it's tiny uh, and i almost missed it and i thought that i may have gotten a faulty panel until i found it and then i turned it on yes i know I don't look at me like that but now let's talk about the panel itself so i'm an fps gamer i like fps games i've been playing cs like basically since launch uh I literally quake 3 since launch which is the year 2000 for us here in south africa so yeah, if you're counting, that's 23 years ago. So I might enjoy your FPS just a little bit. And when you're playing FPS games, you want ultra crisp response times, especially from the pixels themselves. And that really is the only drawback to this monitor. The on-screen display gives you really good control. You can even do things like saturation on there. I once again found the RTS mode to be the absolute best as far as the color palette goes. And I'm really glad that the saturation is there because then you don't have to have NVIDIA control panel. AMD, please wake up with us. You don't have to have NVIDIA control panel where you can balance it actively and see all the colors and all the blends of colors to get the best color reproduction out of the monitor. So I'm glad that they've got that still in here. And the way that it's set up with it, with the control panel on the back, with the joystick, it's just as good as it ever was. So the big check marks there. And then like I say, the panel itself is a 1500R, 1440p, 165Hz, and it's VA. The color palette on this is exceptional because of the contrast. VAs tend to have a bit of a better contrast response compared to IPS. IPS tends to glow and wash stuff out quite a bit. 
and even tuning my Alienware 240 Hz as best I can, it's still a thing and it is noticeably better on this monitor. But when I was playing Battlebit, which I've been playing with the lads pretty consistently, I've put in like 30 hours in the last two weeks, I might be enjoying it just a touch, it's giving me that Battlefield vibe. But playing that, whenever you have a dark color next to a light color, the dark color is going to smear across the light color. It's just going to be a thing. I have noticed with the bigger sizes that it does reduce that effect, not necessarily bigger resolution. The reason I mention that is because this also comes in a 32 inch and I had a mate buy the original 32 1440p 165 for playing Tarkov and he found that it was pretty good and I had bad times on my 1080p 27 especially in Tarkov where there's a lot of dark corridors and hallways and stuff and so all of those dark colors smear across the light colors and it makes it really difficult to play the game like properly when you are in that sort of environment especially in higher FPS areas like you know factory or in labs etc then it doesn't really perform in those sort of environments but outside of that if you're just looking at like a good AAA gaming experience to play stuff like RDR2 or Cyberpunk or something to that effect it's going to do spectacularly. Once you go into the very high FPS areas, you are going to see that smear. If I change, I've actually been able to capture that on camera. You can see with the CS benchmark, the elliptical benchmark that we normally use, the chopper blades, the shadows as they go across the ground, you can actually see now on camera some of that smear. Uh, it, like I say, it is significantly better than the first generation. I would say it's been improved by about 80%. But if you want to reduce that even further, then I would suggest maybe looking at the 32. It's probably a thousand randish more on EPTEC as far as I remember. This sucker though is going for a whole 5,500. So if you're going to do stuff like mostly racing games and you know RTS and MOBA and big open world adventure games, this is going to be one of the best budget panels to give you a good experience thereon. It's only really when you get to FPS that you find that smearing becomes a bit of an issue. There is an MPRT mode once again, and what that does is it strobes the backlight in time with the refresh rate of the monitor to reduce that effect. And it does work, except for the fact that if you don't have like double the frame rate, then it becomes quite noticeable from the strobing, the MPRT. It's a kind of a stopgap to fix the problem, but it does work in the case of games like Counter-Strike and such. So overall, I do like it. I do think that if you're very serious about FPS games and you want to be competitive on the monitor, rather go for the IPS version. The 2721 DJFA that I tested before was crisp as far as that goes. And in general, dull IPS is like that. But if you want the best of both worlds and you want a bit better contrast and less IPS glow, etc., then the VA is a really, really good option for that. You'll see with the Mr. Lizard and the Costa Rica 4K, the footage looks absolutely fantastic. It's super vibrant. It does come out really nice. And that's actually what I've got as a personal setup is an IPS for gaming and VA for watching media because the contrast on this is just significantly better. Where it's supposed to be dark, it's properly dark. And where it's supposed to be light and the contrast between those two things next to each other from, a, from that visual standpoint is better. PPI on 1440p is also really, really nice to have, and it should become a default on this sort of size. Well, it is, right? I mean, at five and a half thousand Rand now, for a monitor of the spec, that was a dream about a year ago, you'd be paying seven to 8K. So, hey, Dal, still no complaints. I'm still gonna suggest this because in 80% of use cases, it's gonna be really attractive to most users. Anywho. That's all I have for you on the S2722 DGM. Yes, Dal, I know most of your monitor codes because I'm actually a bit of a fan and I've got the 34 inch to test and I can't wait to put the same racing ring on it. Anywho, for those of you who've made it to the end, I do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this review, then please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the flip side.